lot of humanity is awakening and asking new questions about what other lies did you tell us? What other lies have you spun? And as a result, it's forcing us all to have new conversations. And we're coming back to that which is true. We're coming back to what we know is true. You know, and that's one of the things I love about the word, about the scripture, about the Ten Commandments, the commandments that are affirmed by Mashiach, the Torah, the holy, pure, and original Torah of Yahuwah Elohim, the original instructions that were given to mankind. This is how you should live. You will live a good life if you live this way. These are not meant to, to control you. These were meant to help you, to bless you, to strengthen you, to cause this face to shine upon you and it gives you shalom, it gives you peace. And we ran away from these things as if they were bondage, but we were lied to about that. And so instead, now we come back saying, teach us again your ways. Teach us again how to walk in your precepts. Teach us about your kingdom. And you know, I'm reminded in Mark chapter 4, he says, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. I want you to think about that. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, they are not inside. All these things are done in parables. They that see, they may see and not perceive. Notice what he's saying here. And hearing, they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sin should be forgiven them. You know, we have to understand that he is speaking to the whole world and only a certain group of people can hear him. We're told that the sower sows the word, the word from on high, the word from heaven. And these are they, there are those that by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they've heard it, of course, what happens? Satan comes immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And then there are those that are likewise which are sown in stony ground who when they have heard the word immediately they receive it with gladness. You know, there's a lot of people that are early adopters and they jump right in. Yes, I believe this is the word of Yahuwah. But they have no root in themselves. And so they endure for a time and afterward when affliction or persecution or they get mocked or some kind of attack against you happens for the word's sake. Immediately they are offended because when you take a stand for the truth, you better plan on having some difficulty out there. And then it says, and these are they which are sown among thorns. Pay attention to this part. Such as hear the word, so they heard. Oh, by the way, all these three groups heard the same sown word, word of the seed got sown into them. But watch what happens. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in choke the word. So because you didn't choke off these things, they come and choke off the word. Hear this now. And it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit some thirtyfold some sixty and some a hundred and he said unto them is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested and neither was anything kept secret but that it should come Broad, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. So he was letting them know way back then, I'm going to sow my word, and every generation is going to hear it. They're going to be able to read and check it, double check it, triple check it. I'm going to make sure my word endures. The same word has endured for 2,000 years, so we know that it has endured through every generation. And we have his word word on his promise 
to deliver those who believe in him, to walk with him from all destruction, from the destruction of the wicked, if you will, that same destruction that the wicked get that the redeemed, the righteous don't receive, right? So he's, he's on the line. His word is on the line. And I believe he keeps his word. He watches diligently over his word to keep it. And so, again, he makes a very clear declaration. And he's letting them know, not just now, but in every generation. And I believe they've been constantly getting busted. I believe the world has reset many times because he keeps warning them. And they keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And that is the very definition of insanity doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. Um, and here we are at the end of the age, and here we go again. We're not even dealing with new fake gods. It's like they just went, they, they couldn't even come up with some new things. Nope, they had to go back 5,000 years, six and go resurrect these fake gods. He is light, he abides in the light, has, so, has been so, and won't go away. The kingdom of, of Yehoah Elohim, the kingdom of God is at hand, it's with in you and he is speaking to his children in a way that they can't control no one can control and as he speaks to us as he reveals the truth to us in every one of these areas we're all awakening wondering now what what do we do as we're waking up to the way the earth really works or the way we've been lied to about so many things that everyone's asking new questions but they're also asking what do we do now and I believe that our adversary wanted confusion to take advantage of so that he could propose his new religion. He wants you to be in a state of confusion. He wants you to be in a state of despair and having no anchor, having no, you know, being disillusioned, I think is probably the best word. He wanted you to be disillusioned so that you will abandon hope in all things that you once believed and then he can feed you his new religion. You see, it's a setup. Because one of the things that the enemy knows is his destruction is certain. So he's been planning for the just before his destruction for this whole time. Because if, that, if you know when you're going to go, you know that your time is short. What did the scripture say? It says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea, because... The enemy hath come down to you with great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. He knows he has a short time. And that's why we're going to see all kinds of weird shenanigans pulled by those who think they have power. And they're going to be introduced to those who really do have power, who have been given power from on high. And that contest will continue until it's over. And so that's why we need to take a step back from just biting the particular piece of this meal that you like or watching this process that you're watching and get a grasp of the whole process going on because I really believe that what we're seeing is a full transformation of our world in every area and I also believe that there are many things yet to come that will take the very heart of many but you know also understand that they who believe in him he said the righteous run in and they are saying to what the name of your the name of Yahuwah. The righteous run in, and they are saved. And so I believe that He is calling His people to come together, to unite in one accord. Focus your time and energy on what you know for a fact He's called you to do every day, like love your neighbor and pray for them and love your enemies and be a light in dark places to walk in kindness and gentleness and meekness, to be merciful, to extend the heart of Yahuwah Elohim, the heart of Almighty God throughout the earth in your day-to-day -day lives.